The morning of May 6, 1954 was a revelatory moment. That is to say, it was a moment that fundamentally changed how people thought. Prior to 1954, if you were to ask somebody if it was humanly possible to run a mile under four minutes, person to person would say no, absolutely not. It's humanly impossible to run a sub four minute mile. Some even thought that if it was attempted, it could be fatal. Then came the morning of May 6, 1954, when a man by the name of Roger Bannister ran a mile in three minutes and 59 seconds. And then what happened was dozens of people around the world, just months following that, began to run sub four minute miles. It wasn't a change in the genetic code. There wasn't a change in how a human was composed over the course of those months. But what changed was a fundamental mindset. What it was, was a belief that running a four minute mile was, was possible. It was a revelatory moment. Today we celebrate the solemnity of the assumption of Mary, body and soul into heaven. And it's uncommon for a solemnity to trump a Sunday, right? So we're on the 20th Sunday of ordinary time, but we're not celebrating the 20th Sunday of ordinary time. We're celebrating the assumption of Mary, right? We, we've been in the book of Ephesians for our second readings. We've been in the book of John chapter six, the bread of life discourse, but we don't hear those readings. We hear the readings for the assumption today. And I think it's for good reason, because the assumption of Mary is sorely needed in our culture and society today. If understood, if we allow this feast of the assumption of Mary to wash over us, I think it can be a revelatory moment today that's needed individually and as a culture. It can be a healing moment. So what does the Assumption of Mary tell us? The need for a revelatory moment and then a couple things for us to do. First, what does the, the Assumption of Mary tell us? Mary's Assumption, body and soul into heaven, proclaims the truth of the human body. Like, namely, that our bodies are really really, really important. Fundamentally, to be a Christian is to have the belief that the body's important. Right? Our faith is incarnational, we say. Right? That is in incarnate, in, in, in the flesh. It's not as if the soul is good, right? The soul is the spot of faith and the body over here is bad. Someday the soul will go into heaven and the body just stays here and we'll just, we'll be without the body. No, the church says the body's good, right? God became man. He took on the flesh, the incarnation. God redeemed the human race through the body. And so the assumption of Mary, fully redeemed, both soul and body, gives us a glimpse of what our end is, what, our, what the end of our body is. That is to say that we'll have our bodies in heaven, Sometimes, you know, whether cartoons or a, you know, a thought in our head, we can think that up in heaven will be, you know, kind of like these floating amoebas floating around on clouds, playing a harp. Th th that's not heaven. We'll have our bodies in heaven. And the assumption of Mary being assumed soul and body in heaven points to that. And because our bodies are, are destined to be shared with the triune God in heaven. It's why the church has the utmost respect for the human body and always wants to talk and uplift and shine the importance on the human body. And it's why the, the church speaks so loudly and strongly against the degradations against the body of which there are many of them in our culture and our society today. The world hates the body. The body's under attack because Satan hates the body. If, if God saved us in and through the body, how is it that Satan wants to destroy in and through the body? And so Satan knows that if he can, if he can taint our view of the body, right, to not reverence it, to not treat it as a temple of the Holy Spirit, 
but rather see the body as something just to be disposed of, to see the body as something to be used or objectified, if that happens, he wins. And you have a plethora of people and a society and a nation that's confused, that's isolated, that's sad. If the body is not seen correctly, if it's seen as something to be abused and objectified. And there's a lot of that going on in our culture today. We live in an extremely over-sexualized and hyper-sexualized culture. Just look at the progression of what was acceptable on TV 50 years ago and what's acceptable today. Forget 50 years ago, just look in the last five years of what was acceptable five years ago. It's changed drastically in just five years. That's an indication of how we treat the body or how the body is seen. We're at the point now where on TikTok, right? So those that are a little more seasoned or peppered, we'd say, like may not know what TikTok is. TikTok is what many of your children and grandchildren are on. TikTok, just recently there was, a, what was trending on TikTok was posting one's body count. That is posting of how many people you've slept with. And so you have men and women on there, it's more so glorified for women to do that, of putting on there five, 10, and to see praised up getting into the thousands of a body count and for it to be shared and glorified. We need a revelatory moment our society does, we do individually, and in how we view the body. You know, as, it, as opposed to the question in the beginning, is, this, is it humanly possible to run a four minute mile? Pose the question, is it even possible today in the 21st century to be chased? Is it even possible? Like, may, like maybe 2,000 years ago, right, when Jesus taught, and he walked around, or when Paul wrote the letters 2,000 years ago, there was no TV back then. There was no internet back then. There wasn't social media. But today, things are different. Is chastity even possible today? Because there's, there's a cynicism. There's a cynicism towards chastity in our culture and society. Nobody waits until their marriage anymore. You can't be chased today. It's not possible. As recently, a mom and a dad were, were telling me that their, their 20 year old, their son who's in, who's in his 20s, young 20s, they were at a, a, a party with other of their friends, husband and wives, and the topic, this topic came up and this husband and wife mentioned the fact that they're that their son is waiting until he gets married. And they were, they were mocked and ridiculed and shamed. You still, like, you still promote that and encourage that in your children? There's a, there's a cynicism. The world says chastity today, impossible. It's silly to even try. Is why we need a revelatory moment, a fundamental change in the way we think, a belief that I can live chastely, that it's possible that the same grace that was applied to Mary at her conception, that she was kept from a, a, original sin, that she knew no tendency of sin, of which we can't relate to that, but the grace bestowed upon Mary is available to us, that we can live chastely, that it's possible no matter what state in life that we're in, whether we're a teen, whether we're a young adult, whether we're married, whether we're a priest, chastity is possible with God's grace. On our own, it's impossible. With him, it's possible. St. John Paul II once said that the mystery of the assumption of Mary proclaims the supernatural de destiny and dignity of every human body. By looking at Mary, the Christian learns to discover the value of his own body. That is sorely needed today. God does not command us to do something that's impossible. 
maybe just a, a word to the youth here this morning. And we'll say the youth or anybody who's younger than me, okay? But to the youth, you're especially being lied to on this front. The world tells you that you're nothing more than your passions. That if, that if you're a, a, a young girl or a young woman, that this is, how you, this is how you get love. This is how you are gained affection. Look at the praise and look how happy these girls are on TikTok that post their body count. It's a lie. That happiness, if it is there, it's fleeting. Authentic happiness does not come when we live outside the accords of God and what he wants for us. Or society telling boys and young men that this is how you're to treat women, to objectify them. That's what love is all about. To the youth here, what all that is is the world selling you short. The world is selling you short and telling you what you can't be, telling you what you're not capable of. You are capable of greatness in this area with God's grace. If you were to accept the vision of God that he has for the body, for your body, and live by it, it leads to life. It leads to happiness, I promise you. So what are we to do? Maybe just two things here on this morning. One is, is to know that Satan loves to show up in church. He loves to accuse, even this morning, maybe especially on this topic, to whisper lies in our ears right now and to say, you're a failure in this area. You're no good. You're damaged goods. He loves to cast a cloud of discouragement and shame. Many of us have deep wounds in our lives because we have either been treated as an object or we've treated others as objects. And the evil one loves to just cast shame here, reject those lies, and to turn to him because he forgives in his compassion, his mercy, he restores and he makes new. He makes us white as snow and we turn to him. All we have to do is to say, Lord, I'd love to be set free in this area of which is maybe a struggle. Well, Father Mark, you don't know the, the, like, the struggle that I have in my past, the mistakes that I've made in this area especially, or the current. Turn to him and count on his power and grace. And maybe secondly, take a step today. Take a step towards him. Take a step towards the sacrament of, the sacrament of reconciliation. Take a step into tapping onto his power and his grace and which he wants to give to us. I'm going to be putting on the website, it should be up by tomorrow, just on the front page of the website, there will just be a box that says Chastity Resources. And on there will be a number of different links and resources, YouTube videos, things to read for any state in life, whether you're a teen, whether you're a young adult, whether you're married, what have you, of how to talk to your children on this topic so as to help us take a step to grow in self-mastery, to take a step in counting in God's grace and what he wants for us in this area. So let us today have the assumption of Mary assumed into heaven, body and soul. Let's have this feast wash over us, to have it be a revelatory moment, to fundamentally change the way we think, belief that with the grace of God, with his mercy, and power, living chastely is possible.